Okay. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah. Seems to be okay. <clears throat> so this this talk is a little bit uh, a hands-on talk. More you will hear about microseconds and and gigabytes per second or gigabits per second. Um, the name of the talk is NVMF-based integration of non-volatile memory in a distributed system. Lessons learned, and it's a joint work from our Zurich group, uh, comprising Jonas, myself, Patrick, Animesh, and Arian. While Jonas did most of the work, and he should basically stay here and present, but I do my best to to present what we did. This is the outline of of, the, of this talk. Um, I first shortly introduced the the target system, which is a uh, Apache Crail. Uh, I did a talk last year on this, on this very same workshop on Crail, so I will keep it short. Then I will, so far as it's needed, um, introduce NVMF, the basic operations of NVMF, and which implementations are available. I go forward to discuss the actual integration of that NVMF technology into the Crail framework. I will underline what we did with some measurements and I will summary and give a short outlook. So what is CRAIL? Um, CRAIL, as the name says, is, is a Apache project since November last year. It's an, an incubating project since last year and it targets at the I.O. acceleration for big data frameworks to due to user level and asynchronous I.O. It basically implements an efficient distributed data store for ephemeral data. So it is basically a store which, which, which keeps uh, the working set data of big data frameworks as they are moving along with their work. And it tries to unify several currently available isolated approaches to bring together big data frameworks and RDMA like, like Spark RDMA or the, or the uh, OSU stack we have talked about, uh, we have he heard about this morning. <clears throat> As, uh, Apache Crail enables a dramatically faster, faster job completion for several jobs. For example, as I presented last year, we were able to um, to accelerate a, a certain workload by a factor of, of six, which, which was the TerraSort workload on a 128 uh, machine cluster. And I have to say that Apache Crail is, is not limited to, to Spark. It, it can be used for many uh, data processing frameworks like also TensorFlow or Lambda Compute or whatnot. It makes flexible use of available hardware. That means that it, uh, it sits on the it sits in the middle uh, between uh, high-speed networking and high-speed storage and the big data framework, and especially in that talk, we are talking about uh, one piece of that hardware stack, which is the NVMF RDMA NVMe framework. The next slide gives a short overview over NVMF, and it's just one slide to, to bring it up. Uh, it, NVMF basically extends the low latency API of NVMe over distance. That means it, uh, it retains the bandwidth advantages of NVMe and the latency advantages as well. So it adds some five microseconds or less of delay when accessing remote non-volatile memory. And quite interesting for, for us within the Crail context, it allows to retain user level I.O. It is defined for different transports like InfiniBand, Rocky, IVOP, or Fiber Channel, and it basically does a mapping of the 
I.O. submission and completion queues of the NVMe model to RDMA, send, receive, and completion queues. It has different uh, commands which are, which are being transferred over the network. Uh, first of all, it has uh, uh, management and admin commands to discover resources, to, to connect targets, and to authenticate clients to the system. And it has I.O. commands to do the actual access to, the, to this uh, non-volatile memory. And here in that example, when we do an NVMe read, basically uh, the, the user wants to read data, it trans transforms it into a post-send to an RDMA send queue, and, is, and the capsule gets transferred over the fabric, which, which is a so-called command capsule, which contains the basic, uh, basically the NVMe command and optionally also data. And that, at the target side, uh, will resolve a receive, and that will trigger an, uh, the RDMA read to the device, and the command will complete, and with that, the RDMA transfer will write back the, the content of the requested segments of, of the NVMe uh, resource, and it, it will conclude the command with, with a send, which, which is traveling back to the initiator. Which is interesting here is that both the command and the response capsule may contain data, while for the response, this is only currently defined for fiber channel. For the, for the command capsule, it is also defined for RDMA, and you can think of if you would allow it to carry data here, and if the data are small, you, you could basically skip this, this RDMA operation by directly transferring the data within the capsule. This slide is on available NVMF implementations, and I have put them into two rows. One is, one is host, one is target, so it's, it's the same story as with, with iSCSI, where you have a target which, which is basically managing the devices and doing the actual access to the resource, and you have a host which is uh, attaching to the target and doing the remote reads and writes to this resource. At user level, which is the most interesting for us here, we have the, the, the SPDK library at the host side and at the target side. At the OS kernel, we, we have an Linux NVMe RMA driver, which is not so interesting for us here because that's only to satisfy the, the Linux block layer. And we have also a Linux NVMe target, which we are also using. And last not least, for the best uh, performance. There's also a hardware offload available where the whole um, NVMe protocol runs basically on the HCA and directly uh, coordinates with the local NVMe drive. And within this talk, I will introduce just another user level library for, for the host side, and this, that's the library which we are currently using within the CRAIL project, and that's something which, which we implemented during the course of the, of the last few weeks, so it's quite fresh. Um, this slide shall give an overview over the landscape of current NVMF implementations. At target site, you have basically three uh, distinct domains. One is the RDMA NIC with the RDMA transport, transport. one is the NVMe device, and one is the, is the uh, host memory piece basically is controlled by the CPU and you have the command and completion queues of both NVMe device and send and receive and completion queue of the ARNIC within host memory. And the target code is running by the CPU currently and data are first put from the two devices into a staging buffer before they can, can fetch to the network or being, being placed to the NVMe device. But uh, there are also defined uh, architectures where the staging buffer is moved to the NVMe device, which would, of course, allow a direct transfer over the PCI bus between uh, ARNIC and NVMe device. 
And there's also possible, and I mentioned that before, the NDME target offload where most of the code is, NDMF code is running on the, on the ARNIC and we actually using such a device for our experiments, which is the Mellanox uh, Connectus 5 with target offloading, which by the way, uh, must use this, the staging memory buffer within the host system because we don't, we did not find any NVMe device which is uh, uh, implementing this uh, control buffer. So the next slide, I'm going back to Crail. And what is this NVMF tier? So it is just another fast storage tier in Crail. So that means it does I.O. to a distributed NVMe resource at its native speed. It uses NVMF and it allows for user level I.O. at client side something which is a must for, for the overall Crail architecture. It is flexible in two ways. First of all, it allows for storage disaggregation or storage integration. So you can think of a NVMe resource which which sits in a distinct data node, which is just having NVMe flash drives to just, just a flash box, which is accessed by Crail. Or what you could also have is a installation, and that's what I'm going to present today. At least the measurements were done on, on systems which comprising both uh, CPU, DRAM, and NVMe flash. It is flexible also in terms of the ab ability to smoothly spill over from one tier and the next tier. So if, for example, a job is using up the, the outmost fastest tier within Cray, which is, is the DRAM tier, then it can automatically spill to the flash tier what is remaining uh, to be written. That results, for example, in a file, in a Crail file, which comprises both blocks which are residing in DRAM and blocks which are residing in NVMe. And it can also be a dedicated tier, so the application can, can say that it wants to keep all the data of one part of its namespace within the DRAM tier only or within the NVMe tier only. So the NVMe F integration into, into Crail comprises a client library and a data node implementation, which I'm going to present on the next slide. So basically, we have three domains of operation within Crail, the storage tier, control, the, the client, and the name node. Starting with the, with the storage tier control, this is basically a, a process which can be lo located somewhere within the uh, Crail infrastructure, it doesn't have to be on a certain node, it can be on some client node, it can be on the name node, it can be somewhere. It connects to the NVMF targets which are within the system and it controls basically the targets and it reads, gets, no, gets knowledge about the, the available resources and it passes that information to the name node and it is not involved within the fast pass, that means if the client is going to read NVMF, it's reading directly via the NVMF pipe to the target. The Crayon name node, as already said, um, maintains the storage resources, so it knows about what um, NVMe resources are available within the system. It gives out new blocks to clients upon request. It, it, reclaims blocks if, if, if they become free, and it may also write logs if it comes to, to uh, implementations where the user wants to be able to recover from, from a crashing name node. At the client side, we are deploying just the NGMF host code, and with that we have two versions. We started out with the SPDK host library, which we used until early this year. And since we were running into issues, I am mentioning uh, later, 
within the talk, we developed our, our own library. And yeah, what it basically does, it, it directly reads and writes blocks within the, within the uh, NUF domain, but unfortunately, it has to implement read, modify, writes. Because, and that's the next slide, because um, the NVMF tier must um, follow the same semantics as the DRAM tier or any other tier within Crail. And this semantic defines that the application can read and write data at the granularity of one byte. So that means uh, that we, at one hand, have a block access, which is the NVMe drive, and we have the, the application, which, is, which wants to at least sometimes read and write only a few bytes within the block. And since this, uh, the NVMF protocol does not define uh, the bit bucket type, which would allow for, for just requesting a few bytes, we have to to read back the whole block from the device for, for a write, we have to merge in the data we, we want to write and we have to write back. So that's a, that's a whole round trip we, we lose when we are writing less than a full block. Of course, this is something we, we don't want and with that we, we try to avoid that sub-block writes as much as possible. That means, at one hand, we are, we are good because we are, we are implementing an, an append-only file system, so only the last block of a write operation will be not complete. And at the second, we, we use typical, or the application should use the model of streams which, which, which are internally align the access to, to a whole block and, and basically withhold writing out the data until a full block gets, gets filled. But we, we cannot avoid this sub-block read and write, of course, if we are uh, closing uh, a stream halfway within a block or if we are reopening a stream. Next slide is on the JNVMF library, which is a new implementation of an, of an NVMF host library. We, we went to that because we, we were running into dependency and stability issues with, with the, the SPDK library. The SPDK library depends on DPDK, and DPDK does some, I would say, very interesting memory management because it, uh, when it starts up, it, it, it uh, fetches all huge pages and, and tries to find the largest block and, and, and does some stuff which, which we really don't need because we, we don't need uh, the DPDK part of it because we are writing directly to the verbs interface of an Arimanic. And the DPDK, which is part of this SPDK, is not meant to be used as a library, so that means we, have, we, have to, we would have to start up the, the DPDK library first, and this library would then own the, the Cradle process, and it also doesn't allow for a shared build. With that, uh, we did a clean slate approach and developed the JNVMF library, which does a simpler memory management. It does only what we really need for, for our use case. It as, as an ex extension or as a new feature which is not available in SPDK, it also allows for in-capsule uh, support of, of reading and writing data, as I mentioned before. So that means if you are reading or writing a small block like a new directory uh, creation, we can, we can put all the information within that command capsule and don't have to do another RDMA write after that. It, supports RDMA inline sense, so if, if the command is, is small, we, we, we can use RDMA inline operations. It reduces the GNI overhead when, when we go out to the user uh, to the 
RMA library, and last not least, because we, are, we got rid of, of the dependencies from SPDK, DB, DPDK, it's much easier to, to integrate with Crayo. So uh, this slide is, is on the devices we, we, were u we were using for our experiments. We, we were using two quite decent and recent devices. One is, is Samsung 960 Pro, uh, which, which is a basically a, a typical 3D NAND device. And we also use the very recent 3DX point device from Intel. And both are implementing NVMe version 2. <clears throat> the read latency, of course, is very different between these two devices. Write latency is in the same ballpark. And you see that the IOPS, which can be uh, taken from the 3DX point are higher than from the NAND de device. And read throughput is quite similar, while there is, a, there is a tip for the Samsung device, which is uh, faster in reading data. Uh, it's, we have to say that uh, both of these devices are not implementing many of the interesting advanced NVMe, NVMe features like arbitration, like scatter gather lists, like namespace management. They just have one namespace. And they also have no controller memory buffer, which would help for a more efficient offload. The next slide um, is a micro benchmark uh, comparing the NVMF read latency for four <coughs> for, for kilobyte reads. And we are comparing the SPDK, the Linux kernel, and the CX5 offload. And we see that, that the latency for SPDK is the best. It's even better than for the offloaded target. But uh, the but what is not shown on, on, on that slide is that the CPU load for the target was zero, which is quite interesting. Um, if we are comparing the host libraries, we compare the SPDK with the JNVMF library, which we've wrote, and we see that, that the normal implementation without uh, using inline sense and in capsule sense is in the same ballpark. But if you are doing this, this in capsule, Right, we are faster with our library because we, we, we skip that RMA read because we are have, having the data within the send and we can directly write the device and come back. Next slide is on NVMF IOPS, also for 4K. We are comparing again the, the target implementations from SPDK, from the Linux kernel, and the offload. And we see that the Linux kernel is flattened out at 400k, so it's not able basically to, to maintain or to use the, uh, the full speed of the device. That slide again compares the IOPS of both SPDK and JNVMF, and we see that basically we are, as well as SPDK, are able to uh, fill the device capability so that we can use the full IOPS over the network while we have, have an edge if you're doing the encapsule operation. I have five minutes left, so I have to hurry up. Uh, <clears throat> moving over to the um, not micro benchmarks, but, but uh, benchmarks which is running real applications. One is TerraSort, and, and the second one is a full TPCDS benchmark run. The setup was as following. We, we are using a 100 gigabit Rocky network with Mellanox X5. We had eight machines, 60 core Intels, equipped with 256 gigabyte DRAM, where we uh, dedicated half of it to the Spark job if the Spark job runs in memory. As the NVMe devices, we had to use the Samsung 960 Pro because we only had four of the Intel devices. Um, as targets, we deployed both the SPDK user level target and the Linux kernel target. And as I said, the experiments we were running were, were TPCDS and TerraSort. And keep in mind, when we are setting up 
vanilla spark we are setting it up not using uh, nvmf so we are trying to to show you that even if you're using nvmf within crail we are faster than vanilla spark running completely in dram so for vanilla spark the the, the the data are always kept in dram that means also that the hdfs file system is mounted to tempfs and backed up by local dram and if if you are discussing a crail nvmf setup that means that all data are always stored in nvmf so all read or write or, sh or shuffle goes to and comes from nvmf oops the next slide compares the terasort benchmark and i this is on the left side you see how how long it takes to to sort 200 gigabytes on vanilla spark where it's everything in in dram and i compare that to having it in crail nvmf tier and you see that even if we are keeping all the data within nvmf we are still faster than than uh, spark which is maintaining all the data in dram and for comparison reason we also show you how fast crail would be if it would run all its benchmark in dram as well so it would be of course faster than vanilla it's a factor of 3 for for that particular installation but it's not that much faster than if you're using the nvmf tier moving forward to tpcds benchmarking again we are having spark with all its data all input all output all shuffle within dram and here first we have it as well for crail so we have both systems spark with crail and vanilla spark running in dram and and the commutative density function shows that most of the time when we are running in crail we are much faster up to a factor of 2.5 so these are the 104 queries and most of the queries are right side of the line of being equal to the system we compare with if you are now looking and into deploying the the crail and the left here we see that this curve is moving more to the left that is because the the nvmf tier within crail cannot quite keep up with the speed we, we have seen for the dram tier but we are still overall faster if you are looking at the cumulative runtime of all the jobs we are still um, finishing the complete run in less seconds than when using spark vanilla spark and half of, of the queries are faster half of them are not and we are currently looking into which um, are faster and why they are faster and if that comprises maybe a, a certain subset of data manipulation operations which are interesting for certain workloads so that's something we, we measure just this this weekend and uh, it is still a work in progress and we are still discussing how to read this correctly with that i'm at the end of my talk the summary and outlook so we can say that nvmf of course is the adequate extension to nvme within a distributed system since it allows for the efficient management of ephemeral data with when they do not fit into dram and at, at the same time since nvme is cheaper than dram we are able to to save costs um, then we have to say that nvmf supports clever device io management like in capsule data uh, sending and receiving but which is unfortunately not provided by most of the targets which are out there and also interesting nvmf allows data set management something we implemented within our host code so that 
For example, we can give hints to the device that, that the current uh, stream of, of data is to be written only once and, and to be read a lot of time afterwards or that, that the next writes will be sequential and this kind of things is being uh, transferred within our library. Today, we looked mainly at, at DRAM replacement, so we, we, we looked basically at the performance of NVM, but we did not look into the persistency of it. That is something which is an open issue, how we could make use of the persistency uh, of NVM uh, memory within our system, and what we are currently building up is a is an extension to the tier which allows for recovery of data when the name node, for example, crashed. We are having a, a working prototype which is able to replay the whole uh, set of reservations since the data are still within the NV NVM e-blocks. We, we could just jump start from the point where the system crashed. And as I said before, the NVMe tier, uh, the NV NVMF tier, access patterns need further investigation, something Paul also mentioned in his talk. And here it's the case that we are reading and writing sequential most of the time, which is nice for the device, but at a macroscopic level, if you have multiple tasks using hammering, uh, to the same NVMe devices, things will, of course, not be sequential anymore. So we are losing all the benefits of sequential access to a device if you're looking at a macroscopic uh, view on using that resource. As I said, Apache Grail is, is an open source Apache project, and there's a URL where you can download and try it out. Thanks very much. The questions? Mm -hmm. um, so in this Crail architecture, is um, NVM F supposed to be durable? In I our mean, case, it, is, it, is it RAID 1? In our case, two it's, copy, it's, it's copy. just flat memory. It's, it's, it's just a flat storage. So model. it's single copy. So that's, that's basically the same as if it would be DRAM. I have to come, if I go very much back here. Um, basically, we have a, we have, you have implemented a namespace where you have fire blocks, and these blocks sit in DRAM or in NVMe. But what's the advantage of F? Of F? Yes, versus non-F. Because uh, the... Uh, the client wants to read from, from that distributed thing. So that thing is completely distributed. Uh, basically, here we have a Apache Crail data store. And that data store is backed by DRAM or block storage or NVMF storage or a cloud ob object store is also possible. And on top of that uh, data store, we, we have the big data frameworks. So it's basically a, a, it's a, it's a big uh, piece of, of, of a resource which, which uh, provides a namespace. It, it's it's something, like, uh, something like a very fast file system. Yeah, uh, we have break time now, so we are done with the session. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.